Welcome to Detox with Allison. Oh shit, we're recording. You are the best podcast naming person. <laughs> this is the show where we sit down with comedians and other funny people, make them take their vitamins and ask them about their life or whatever else we get into. Let's hope Charlie got it right this time. Hey guys, welcome to Detox with Allison. We got Dean Allen Stanfield in the house, yeah. and he is about to get his IV. And I am, and I'm going to watch it because I'm not a little sissy like Rocky Bell Davis. Huh? <laughs> you know, when I say, eat your heart out, Rocky. Oh shit, look at that. Hell yeah. Mr. Stanfield Mr. watching Stanfield it. Stanfield watching it. He's like, I like to watch. Keep just- the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> I just passed out. <laughs> There we no, go. No, but I do, I do get it. I do get it. It is haunting to watch. I don't know why is that. Have we figured out the? I think it's just psychology like, behind that. It's got to be a survival thing, right? right. Like, like, no, people are not supposed to be getting in my veins. I want yeah. My veins well, because we were untouched. talking, we were talking about hunting right before this, yes. and like, it's so funny. I didn't realize I inherited this from my dad, but like, we'll clean deer like it's no problem. And as soon as you have to deal with like an injury on a person, oh, especially oh, yeah. someone you love, it's totally different. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. So I guess it's like self is the I hardest. Know, I bet we're we're better at it. Like kids that thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah. That was awesome. That was not even that bad at all. I only got a little bit scared. Um, <laughs> gauntlet okay, thrown man. at Rocky. Yeah, gauntlet thrown at Rocky. What's up, Rocky? How could <laughs> such a big guy be that much of a weenie? You know? <laughs> like there's a lot of things that he's 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 like that way. He gets squeamish in weird ways. You oh, know? and we're gonna he's cut this for squeamish. sure and send it to him. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. This is my opportunity to talk shit to Rocky. So no, um, we were talking about it. I might as well just get it out. So he asked me, uh, he asked me to come to Kentucky with him to do a, to do a show at a, um, the barrel, the, it's a whiskey distillery in Kentucky. I can't okay. remember what it is. How much can you move with these? Do you have to worry about that? I would just say don't like pinch your arm too much because okay, so it can don't cut show it off. My biceps. But if you look over right on the strand there, there's yeah. that little rolly thing in the middle. Okay. If you push it up, it'll make it drip faster. There's a ball, oh. like, and if you push it down, it'll close it. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was it Buffalo Trace, Dean? Buffalo Trace Brewery. Oh our, shit! Our, Thank uh, you, Charlie. Hell yeah, Charlie yeah. Bowl over there. There we go. Doing his thing. Um. So yeah. So I was gonna go out there, and he was like, "Hey, man. Uh. So there's like a two day buffer between, uh. You know where." We do the show, and then when we do the the tour thing, right? So you have like two different shows, with and a I'm gonna days be off. I'm in I'm gonna be in Pennsylvania before that doing mm. a skank fest with uh, Ryan Joseph, oh, uh, like yeah. a skank fest pre show thing there. They're doing so I'm flying over there, and he was like, "So where are you gonna stay in between? You know, you get a hotel or whatever, right?" And I was like, "No, dude, the Kentucky River's right there. It's great fishing. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go to a campsite and do some fly fishing. I'm gonna sleep outside." And he was for like, two days. "Yeah," and he was like, "You're gonna sleep outside?" I was like, "What kind of a country boy?" <laughs> Are you Rocky Dell Davis? Did you go to Kentucky? Some of the best mountain air out there, and you're gonna go stay right. in a Motel Six? Yeah. What the? Go take your cigars into the wild, dog. There's just no <laughs> class in Brookwood, dude. There's, That's what I we gotta learn. Not. You go up in a trailer park. Uh, yeah. So did I. You did? Yeah. I did. I grew up. In, I grew up in. I grew up since I was born. I've lived in a trailer. So inside and outside of trailer parks, but always in a trailer. Okay. So rednecks, we have this thing where we're like, we're not trailer trash. We don't live in a trailer park, but we just take our trailer and we put it on some land. And so now you're that not trailer That we can't trailer. afford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we start accumulating more trailers because we can't afford it. And then we turn into a trailer park ourselves. Right. It's an evolution. It's like homegrown trailer it park. It's homegrown trailer park. Yeah. It usually consists of family and people that can't pay their bills. So. Do you still live in a trailer? Uh, I do not. No, I live in a house now. Okay. I live in a house now. Yeah. Uh, I'd lived in a trailer up until last year until I started to do... Stand-up comedy, and I felt it would be uh, depressing to be a stand-up comic and living in a trailer. So. I mean, is that a step up from being a stand-up comic who lives in their van, though? Oh, 100%. Is it? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not Hans Kimmin it out there. It's, <laughs> it's shocking to me how many comedians do that. Like, I, I get the appeal, I guess. Cause... I don't at all. Well, it's a bed. <laughs> a bed that's sounds true. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, a bed, a bed would be nice. And how are you going to pick up chicks? What kind of d- self-respect? <laughs> like, the women that I attract aren't, like, you know... Women that like the mullets aren't as. Uh, I think those are the know. women most likely to fuck you in a van. And dude. I don't want that. I don't want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not people like, dude. I bet you fuck all the time. No, dude. Because I gotta weed through the crazy more than anybody else. <laughs> so yeah. you put the mullet on, and then you're just like, all right, ninety percent of the women into this are gonna be crazy. Is oh, this just 100%. you teaching yourself how to not fuck crazy and women? Yeah, and I love it too. Like, I, that's crazy women are my thing, you know. And it's 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 just a double negative. <laughs> 
that has caused a lot of pain and sorrow in my heart. Yeah, it's been a lot of heartbreak in my future and in my past. <laughs> I guess at least you know you're the one causing it a little bit. Oh, 100%. You, you yeah, could no, cut awesome. your hair and uh... my hair any day and be a hot guy again. <laughs> Oh, shit. Or trick people in. better. But that's just me, you know? I like it because uh, I've never felt more comfortable in my skin than when I've had the mullet. How long have you had it? Uh, it's been uh, t- two and a half, three years now. Okay. Yeah, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's been a hot minute. It's part of the brand, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. But I can cut it off anytime. Right. I plan on there being, like, in two or three, four years, when I get big enough for it to matter, and then cut it off for some, like, cause or something, you know? Yeah. And oh, then, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's like if uh, I were to try and shave my head. Maybe take it from Locks of Love. Yeah, maybe Locks of Love. Locks of Love kids that need some that rat tails. They want a mullet. They want a oh. mullet. Oh, that'd be, that'd be cool. Can that'd you be cool. imagine being a kid that got your hair and it's just like the curliest and it only covers part of their head? <laughs> They're just like, oh, I thought I was going to get like cool guy hair. <laughs> yeah. No, you got Dean Allen stand. No, all these there. chicks are yeah. trying to fuck me in my car for no <laughs> reason. <laughs> for no reason at all. No reason. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by MSW Nutrition. You know those... Uh, frilly looking cocktails we're always drinking on the show that is from them uh that is their boost product and uh, msw nutrition is a supplement line designed to help support your body in as many ways as possible starting with the liver liver health is really important and a lot of people don't know this but by helping to repair liver health you're supporting your body's biggest detox organ so that it can do its job taking care of the rest of you I always like to talk about this as if it's like an air filter. You can, you know, you got your air filter for your AC unit. Once that gets dirty, yeah, it kind of still works, but you need to change it out every once in a while or at least clean it. The liver is the same way. Once you start detoxifying the liver, it makes weight loss, hormone balance, all those health goals be a ton easier. So really, really cool that they start by targeting the liver. Um, there's all sorts of supplements by MSW nutrition. They've got some for mood, stress, energy, weight loss, gut health, immunity, and other things like anti-aging, all the stuff, all the stuff that you want. It's probably on there. Uh, any product carrying the MSW nutrition label will be produced in FDA certified labs, and it will contain the most bioavailable version of those nutrients possible. That's the other thing a lot of people don't think about with their supplements is there's several different forms of any different nutrient. And a lot of supplement companies cut corners by producing the cheapest one, which usually is absorbed by the body the least. So MSW Nutrition, make sure that they are using the one that your body will absorb the best. So make sure to check out their website at mswnutrition.com to see all the latest stacks to help you reach whatever your health goals are. And if you make sure to use the code DETOX, that is D-E-T-A-L-K-S, at checkout, you can save 15% on anything you buy. That is code DETOX, D-E-T-A-L-K-S. And uh, yeah, you're going to love it. Also want to give a shout out to MSW Health Lounge in Westlake Hills, Texas. That is on the west side of Austin. They are the guys that let us use their How Do You Health studios for our podcast. And they hook us up quite literally with vitamin IVs anytime myself or a guest wants one. These guys follow the same principles as MSW Nutrition, as you can probably tell. They started the supplement line (laughs) and they're amazing. They know so much shit about nutrition and health in general. If you are looking for vitamin IVs of top quality and quite honestly, the cheapest around, (laughs) check out MSW Health Lounge in Westlake Hills, Texas and let them know I sent you. Detox is produced and sponsored by Big Laugh Comedy. Big Laugh Comedy is changing the world one comedy experience at a time. Big Laugh Comedy is the first ever company that provides you with a complete comedy experience from live shows throughout Texas in Austin, San Antonio, San Marcos, and Fort Worth to comedy news and everything in between. If you're looking to laugh your ass off with some of the best comedians in the world or you want to know what your favorite comedian is up to, you need to visit Big Laugh Comedy at blcomedy.com. Get exclusive content and first dibs on tickets by becoming a VIP for free. Go to blcomedy.com slash VIP dash list. <laughs> I had a girl just grab me in Vegas. I was just in Vegas doing uh, shows with Brett Ernst. And uh, um, I was there and we were, I was like drunk. And I was sitting at a McDonald's and I was waiting for him to call for my food. And this chick just sat down and ran her fingers through my hair. And I, we just started making out, you know? We just started making out. I was like, what? I'm a little drunk too, you know? And I was like, all right, they called my food. I went over there. I grabbed my food. And on my way back, there was a dude sitting next to her. Oh, no. When I turned around, it was her husband. What the fuck? I know. So we sat down, and she was like, oh, hey, this is my husband. And I was, immediately, I was like, all right, what happens in Vegas stays in <laughs> Vegas, but I'm getting the hell out of here. This is, this is making me feel You're uncomfortable. just like, I wasn't I like planning this. on this family reunion, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Jeez. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had wow. no idea. 
No idea. That's not even fair. Even if he knew that, that like if they were into that, he's like, yeah, yeah. go do that. That's not cool that she just sprung no, it on you. Yeah, and it's going to get me. I'm yeah. going to get my ass kicked because right. he's not going to believe that I wasn't the instigator in right. that situation because I look like I look. You know? <laughs> he's going to be like, you're telling me my wife's into those mullets? Yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> no, come on, dude. You know, I've never had a mullet. and She married me. <laughs> you know what's weird is I have a lot of ladies come up to me. They're like uh, elderly ladies. And they'll be like, uh, oh, my husband used to have your hair. My husband used to have hair just like yours. It's so gorgeous. Can I take a picture? And then the husband's like there. And he's like, I did have that hair back in the day, you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, ah, this is a weird it situation. A, I don't want to be What kind of cuck is this? Yeah, right? <laughs> like, just a picture. Uh, it's so, but no, it's, um, gets a lot of attention. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When are you? Uh, when are you going to do this Kentucky thing with Rocky? It's supposed to be the end of the the twenty ninth. Is when I'm. Was so when September twenty ninth. September twenty ninth. Yep, yep. Fuck yeah! And you said you're starting a, the the kicking off a tour. So no, they're kicking off. They're just they're doing this. Uh, Louis J. Gomez, uh, William Montgomery, and Ryan Joseph are all doing uh, a Skankfest pre show. Okay. In Pennsylvania, so it's a Skankfest. I guess promoting the show or whatever. Um, and because uh, Skankfest is in November, and I'm on Skankfest. Yeah. So, so I, is the Skankfest South? Is that is that just Skankfest this year, or are they calling it the South? Like, are they doing one both New York? I think and they're going to try to do New York. I think that was. I think that might have been the original plan, mm. but New York is still shut down. Yeah, and so I don't think they can do it anymore. Well, so it might shut just down, be yeah, shut down for Skankfest because it's all vaccine stuff now. So it's what? like if you don't want to get that, then you're then just you not going to have your festival. Yep. No, you have to get your vaccine for. Uh, uh, for Skank Fest. Like, I'm going to have to get it. I have to get oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. At least if I want to do it. So that's the hard part. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that are, because uh, I, I mean, I know a lot of people, especially that either follow <laughs> my comedy or just around me in general. You turning yours up? What's up, dog? Oh, shit. We going hard? Hell yeah. yeah. Let's do it. I don't even know what it does. What does it do? Uh, push it up just a little, so you see the top part where the drops are coming out. You yeah. can kind of see them speed up or slow down based on where you put that. Oh, geez. I didn't pay attention to that. I didn't see no bubbles. Uh, no, it's at the uh, very no, top by the bag. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's oh, where the drips are. Yeah, so, so that'll speed that, up or right? slow down. Yeah, that's pretty okay. fast. That so we bad? have a we have NAD in here, and you might start to feel it. Like, woo, I'm getting a rush right now. Um, oh, I was already starting to feel amped. Yeah, I was talking really fast. Uh, I know. We're just <laughs> I wonder, we're gonna look back at this episode, and we're just like, <laughs> yeah, you were scared. I was putting the vaccine in your IV, but I actually, said, yeah, it was just a... Adderall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dream of Chrome or whatever. This <laughs> what is that? Everyone, I don't know. I don't My even... dad's scared of it, and I, he talks about it all the time. And so I was called him, and I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna, you know, going to do this show with uh, um, where they put this IV bag on you." He's like. Uh, I said, uh, I think it's got something in it. You said AD, or I'd heard AD. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so I was just like, oh, I heard something about a dream of Chrome. Or something. <laughs> and he was like, don't let them do that to you. <laughs> he Charlie's so looking into it. Uh, I need to see I need to see what that is, I think, because, yeah, how's yours doing? Mine's doing well. Fuck yeah. What's going on with yours right, over there? Mine's a little leaky. <laughs> Here's what I got. I don't for, like uh... it when people say a little leaky. I don't right? think it's supposed to be a little leaky. No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to text someone to get this. All right, here's what I got for Adrenochrome. Okay, what's Adrenochrome? Um, uh, this podcast is going to get weird. Oh, I know. I love it. It's uh, the blood of children is harvested uh, for a drug called Adrenochrome. Which, oh, wait, so uh, this is some conspiracy oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. I wish I'd have done my research before I just brought that shit up. Offers a psychedelic dark. experience and possibly holds the promise of immortality for those who take it. So this is the people Bullshit. who are like, everyone's a lizard person if they're a politician and they're eating the blood oh, of children. Oh, and they're eating the blood of children. Those oh, people shit. are weird. Dude, I want to meet uh, your dad now if he's worried about adrenochrome. He's not that way. He's not that way. Okay. He's not that far. He's yeah. just, he just listens to Fox News and repeats whatever they say. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know. Fo or Fox he doesn't. He knows more than me, but he's also, I'm a replica of him, so he's not, <laughs> that's how I catch him. Because he tries to act smarter sometimes. Right. He's like, hey, you got to know about this, uh, you know, Biden, and he'll say something crazy. Right. And I'm like, Dad, don't, we're from the same genetics. Don't <laughs> don't act all. Like, Dad, you telling me this is causing my genetics to fucking flare up. Yeah, dude. Anyway, I, I, feel, I feel what I inherited from you coming out right now because you brought this shit up. Yeah. <laughs> He just listens to Fox News. That's all it is. That's becoming more and more dangerous these <laughs> it, days. It's scary. Any I of those. I, honestly, I quit watching when this... Um, um, I just like during the pandemic, it was just like every single day, it's something crazy. And I started with the Afghanistan thing. I started watching more. Uh, like that was the first time I'd actually like physically watched the news right. since I don't even know when. Yeah, since Trump, they were 
you know, those those were fun. Those pot, those those were fun. <laughs> those were pretty fun. I mean, I, just watching him, he was like, "What is he gonna say?" <laughs> love you know, him or no hate idea. him, he, he was a he was wild card, and it was yeah. hilarious. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was out of the. Just dripping a little bit over here, yeah. Just some drips. She tried to turn some it up. Drips. I turned it up, and it kind of yeah. did that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I never want to like scare podcast listeners when I get an IV because I'm like, this is not painful. I promise, this is yeah, not. Yeah, it hurting. really wasn't. I was, I, you know, people saw it. You know. When I went into me, I didn't. I didn't flinch or nothing. No, you're vascular as shit over there. Look I at that, just getting like, the big boom, veins. Boom. Yep. It is. I can feel it in my body, though. You I said you used to it. get these from a girlfriend of yours. I don't know if that's legal to say, but yes, I won't say which girlfriend. But yeah, no, there's no name. Uh, we would get hung over. Yeah. Uh, I would, you know, go out drinking all weekend. Right. And she would bring out these. Uh, she would bring IV bags. Yeah. Hook us up, and you felt instantly better. She got Dude. really mad, so she used to do it to us all the time. <laughs> She would hook us up and then leave. And then, you know, when you're done, you just take it Pull out. Pull it out, yeah. And uh, we'd give Thank her, you. you know, 150 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever. Right. And uh, uh, there's one time she came over back to check on us, and we were drinking. <laughs> while you were like, getting while we had, like, We all had made Dos Equis, Bloody Marys. <laughs> oh and she was God. like, what are you doing? And we're like, we're trying to get rid of the hangover. She's <laughs> like, if you would let that do its work. <laughs> We're just refiltering back in. We've uh, definitely done these like for bachelorette parties and stuff. Oh, and 100%. like percent. And it is funny because like we'll we'll pitch it to them sometimes of like detox before you retox. Mm. And actually Connor Nutt was talking about starting a podcast called Retox, where he just books the same people I do a week after I book them when he just, <laughs> he make, just gets, gets them drunk. hammered on the yeah, show. <laughs> just call it retox after you've been on Allison's podcast. Retox. Jeez. <laughs> so that's dumb. hilarious. I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, free booze. Come right. on, I'll get drunk. Right. Well, it's, it's also funny how many comedians will just take free shit no matter what it is. I didn't ask you. I asked you a couple questions. Yeah. And then I said, whatever is in you, whatever yeah. you're getting. Whatever you're getting, give I'll it to me. It. Yeah. Everyone that's come in here has had a similar react. Like, you were one of the calmer people. Be like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, IV, let's do it. Yeah. Most people are like, oh, you were serious about that? And I'm like, yeah, if you want it, you know, if you want to get an IV, like, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then they're just the same thing as you. Whatever you're getting, it's fine. It's free. Cool. Like, I don't want to. Yeah, 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 whatever the free stuff is. I'm not yeah. paying the extra. No. <laughs> Thank you so um, much, Taylor. <laughs> well, I think that comes from, I think that really stems from uh, uh, the, the mass majority of us being poor. You know, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely helps. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like, whatever it is, I don't have money for things right now. And that sounds like a thing. Yeah. And I want more things. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. When you mentioned your girlfriend that used to do that for you guys, yeah. I was laughing because one of my roommates in college was a nursing major. And when they started doing their clinicals and like needing to test, like she would bring home, they have those like fake skin ball things. So you can like uh, test. My girlfriend did it on me. My ex. Well, she she got a boyfriend when she started clinicals, oh. and he would just stay at her house, and she would practice on him. And I was like, blowjobs make you dumb. Blowjobs <laughs> make you dumb. She would come over, and I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore. And she's like, What if? And what I'm like, if? Are you offering blowjobs as, as clinical practice? Yeah, for now sure. we know now, what your yes. price is. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> just so suck low. his dick. You can it's do anything. So <laughs> Ladies, if you want something, it's just it's been said a thousand times. We can't say it anymore. Um, <laughs> I've I've made some of the worst decisions I've ever made in my life right after a blowjob. Right. Yeah, your head's not there. It's not well <laughs> They say something about clarity, but the after blowjobs there's no clarity. No, there's you're just, just like dead. You're ready for sleep. I almost quit baseball because I got a blowjob. What? A hundred percent. Almost it was my sophomore year in high school and I got a blowjob for the first time and I was like, I didn't want to do anything else. <laughs> I was like, this is what, and subsequently, you know, like you, you have to be, continue to do baseball to get the blowjobs. But <laughs> for a while I was like, man, that, this is all, this is. You're just like, if it's between running laps and blowjobs. <laughs> why wouldn't I just get blowjobs? Right, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I get just as a sweaty. Te teenage mind can't handle the, the can't handle the, 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 the moral and mental obligations of implications of getting blowjobs. It's yeah. too much. It's too much serotonin. We should never <laughs> experience that. Uh, <laughs> wait till you're 25 and you can handle that. That's what right. I say. Right, you need to yeah. have a fully Puritans formed had it brain. Right in a couple ways. <laughs> you gotta have a fully formed brain before you can make you that decision. 100, or you're gonna make bad decisions. <laughs> Such bad decisions. What's one of the worst decisions you've ever made after a blowjob? Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry, mom. Uh, oh God. <laughs> I I drove. Uh, I think agreeing to drive a girl. No, I drove a girl back like from like a five hour drive. Like she was there and she had stayed during spring break because I went to school in Los Fresnos. This is probably, this is a good one. Yeah. Uh, and she was like, hey, uh, we were having fun. We'd been hanging out and making out and doing all kinds of stuff all weekend. And uh, her friends were going home. Mm -hmm. And she was like, uh, you know, I want to stay another day, but I don't have a ride. And uh, and I was like, 
I was like, oh man, that really sucks. Uh, I mean, but I'm not gonna give you. I'm not gonna give you a ride. Oh, you know, I'm not gonna go drive seven hours. You know, right. like, we'll just we'll see each other again sometime. Right. Whatever. And then, uh, and she was like, I was just like, are you sure? Are you sure? And then doing that whole thing and then being sexy. And then she gave me a blowjob and I was like, you know what? I think seven I think hours. I can. You can stay for another 12 hours. I can get another nine of those. I think it's worth it now. It's bad enough. The, my, math's, the math's coming together in my My head. hourly rate yeah. is one seventh of a blowjob. <laughs> and then, what I just and if you heard. can get one of those bad boys on the road, that's, that's, that's worth it the whole time. Yeah. You, hey, some people say that uh, winning hundreds of thousands of dollars playing craps in Vegas is fun. Get a blowjob in Corpus Christi, Texas, okay? <laughs> There's enough bumps on that highway to make it worth your while. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's terrible. I wish oh, I had said that. I Everything that, that I say is from here on out. It's because of this adrenochrome that yeah, you got yeah. dripping in my body. Yeah, we're getting you hopped up over there. Yeah, it's just getting crazy. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. What's up, guy? Yeah, there's a ton of people walking around today. Yeah, dude. I was wearing these shorts <laughs> were too short. What if it? Your jorts. Anyway. Dude, I didn't know. So I went to UT when I went to school. Okay. And before <laughs> scans, right, <laughs> obviously. Um, but like I didn't know it was such a thing for dudes to cut off their whitewash jeans from when they were frat frat pledges oh, yeah. to make jean shorts. And then they'll wear their cowboy boots with it like they're girls. Okay, like well, the Miley Cyrus si- style. I, I've, I've done that before. I have it's done funny. It before. It's funny. It is funny. We do it for Chili Fest every year. Okay, that's, that's such a Chili, Chili Fest, Fest thing. Yeah, yeah. For people who don't live in Texas, Chili Fest is like it's A&M's amazing. breeding grounds. I don't even know. Texas. <laughs> that's where all Aggies are born. Texas yeah, A&M. Yeah. yeah, the only reason Giggle. Texas A&M University Whoop. exists is to have Chili Fest every year. I'm pretty uh, sure. <laughs> and to beat the hell out of UT. To beat the uh, hell out of UT. <laughs> that's what we're about. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, we're not going to start this. I, I got a tattoo on my back. Were, I oh, should yeah. have known you were an Aggie. I got Aggie, Aggie blood in me. It's maroon. Damn. You can't see it because it's not coming out. Man, but, yeah, I didn't know this was going to be a fight on the air. Come on. I can't wait for it. Y'all come back to the SEC. Dude. Y'all are making a bad decision because it's going to How town. crazy is that? The Big 12 is going game. to shit, dude. I'm gonna, like I'm going to I'm gonna uh, probably drink a lot of Everclear. <laughs> and I'm going to do my best to not go home with... Uh, uh, with a longhorn with chick. With a longhorn chick yeah. because <laughs> I'm going to be making bad decisions that night. It's been 12 years since we've had. I know. Well, I don't we're know. not switching. What was switching. the last Aggie game? Aggie longhorn game. Charlie we're not game. switching until 2024, right? So we got a couple more finish years. Contract. Dude, I don't even drink and I will drink with you on that game. Hell yeah. If we let's get together watch, and review dude, it. Oh, let's do a watch party. Let's do a watch party. We got to save this oh, for this two years down awesome. the line I'm, or I'm three years, it. whatever. I'm all about it. We'll go and have our own tailgate and yeah. just Dean and Allison's Dude, tailgate. Dude, comedy tailgate. Oh, we'll do like a rug. We'll have like an A&M rug on this side. Oh, it's going to be great. Right. House divided. That House would be divided. so funny. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Damn, my brother went to AM too. So oh, we're did definitely he? Is he an like, yeah, yeah, we're definitely like a house divided. That's yeah. Where we grew up in, it's yeah. fun. Yeah. I, I like it. I mean, I visited him at AM a few times and like the year. Oh, College Station's amazing. That's God's country. I That's hate College country. Station, Whoa. but I love going to AM football games. Oh, an AM football game. If you, I've had comics come. Uh, Heather Shaw yeah. came to me and she was like, You seem like the guy that knows football. Dude. She was like, What are my favorite teams? And I was like, You're going for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Yeah. But that's you can you can go for any other team you want in the NFL. It doesn't really matter. Right. But you're an Aggie. I was no. Like, you're an Aggie till you die. Fuck. Listen, you put your thumb up and you whoop, <laughs> you gig them. I was like, do you know why? Do you know why you, we call you T sips? No. Cool. This is cool. It's an interesting fact. So, uh, the derogatory word for UT fans is T-sip. and AM is T sips. Yeah. And the reason is during World War II, uh, uh, College Station Brian uh, or the College Station campus had to shut down. Because we had so many young men go to fight. Because the core, Marie, the core is a really big uh, A&M really too. Big yeah, thing yeah, yeah. And uh, UT stayed open. So what they said was, uh, during the war, uh, we went to go fight for our country while the UT boys sat home and sipped tea. Oh my god! So we called them tea sips. That's really funny, actually. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, the cowards. thing they always say at UT about it, or what I've heard, is uh, happens once at A&M. Cool. If it happens twice, it's a tradition. Everything at A&M is a fucking tradition. Dude, it's a cult. And I but love it's it. it's a cult, 100%. but it's actually really fun. You got to get beers at um at the Dixie Chicken. You got to play dominoes at the Chicken. You got to do it. <laughs> you got to do it once in your life. You got to walk down uh the uh, the bottle cap row. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, Shiner Row. Uh, go get a, a sh- uh, the breakfast shot. At, uh, I think it's Backyard that serves that one. What is it, like sandwiches at Lane's, too? Chick- oh, sandwiches yeah. at, no, chicken yeah. at Lane's. Chicken, yeah. Chicken's, it's Lane's over Cane's. Yeah, well, there's Lane's so, and Cane's next well, to each other, but Lane's, Lane's in, is like. So Lane's is the original. They stole, Cane's, Raising Cane's stole 
that idea from Lanes. Lanes is the original one. Oh shit! And they took it and they made it corporate because Lanes yeah. would never go corporate. They only wanted two locations. Right. And they weren't doing anything. Uh, no other bullshit. That was kind of their vibe. And uh, somebody was like, "Well, this is dumb," which is fair. Right. And took it on the road, but now it's uh, now it's like a big thing. If you're from College Station, you know it's Lanes. It's over Lanes. Yeah yeah, 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 for sure. Charlie found some stuff for yeah, us. Yeah, I got the. Uh, oh hell yeah! Last time A and M and UT played was in 2011 when the yeah. Longhorns won 27 to 25. They did. That, that was, was a, close. That was, that was, that was a really such good, game. A good game. I remember that being like. A childhood memory I will never ever lose. <laughs> it was insanity. Yeah, I just I was broken hearted young fat kid. Dude. Oh, so broken hearted. <laughs> it was I mean, at that time, like I was in high school, my mom had gone to UT, so the whole family still rooted for UT. So we were like excited. Um, but yeah, when my brother got to AM was like the first year he was a fraternity pledge when Who did you push with? he was a Sigma Chi. Okay. And uh, he was a pledge as a freshman the first year that they played in the SEC. Yeah. And so he somehow got Alabama game tickets for me oh. and him. And we went. That Alabama game this year is going to be. It's going to be lit. Blooded, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the we should watch that with Rocky. Down there. Oh, it's, oh, that sounds amazing. I don't I'll be an Aggie for that one. Yeah, I'll be an Aggie for that one. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was so crazy. Cause like during football season, we might should do a pot. We'll talk about it later. We'll do it. Yeah. This isn't even a podcast. football podcast, but we're no, just out. Not, we're fuck just it. Out I love it. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what we're supposed to be. I might've just hijacked this whole thing. No, I, I want to just talk about whatever. Like, Hell yeah. yeah. Um, but I was just going to say like, it was just so funny to be at the A&M campus when they're already so crazy. Like any home game is insanity no matter who they're playing yeah. but they were so they bloodthirsty to, to beat alabama and of course that year they weren't gonna do it yeah. but like we in our hearts we thought we did and <laughs> we we're up there up. chanting and yeah. singing we show up it's and electric. everyone's doing that shit we're in the student section my brother's already like super drunk because he's yeah. a pledge and they were just like having him go shot for shot with them at the tailgate and just uh -huh. like <laughs> i had to walk him home after the first quarter because it was so hot and he was drunk we didn't even get to watch the whole game uh, <laughs> but they got their asses kicked so 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah. Um, but that I remember that uh, that LSU game. Do you remember that LSU game? The As Aggies it, and LSU? Yeah, I remember them getting wild. Yeah. So it went, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Charlie Bull, but I think they went to 13 overtimes. Dude, I do so remember that one. It that was, was Thanksgiving weekend. Ridiculous. Thanksgiving, uh, I think it might have been like Thanksgiving Friday they played, or Thanksgiving Saturday. And they... Uh, they went on for f for thirteen different overtime. It just kept happening and just win it. It was the <sighs> it was the most insane game I think that's ever. It was. They made rules because of it. Hours like, hey. longer, yeah. <laughs> because there's rules. It's like, hey, if you if you uh, you can keep going technically if both teams still score, right? And they were just kicking, kicking, <laughs> kicking, kicking, and they were just like I, those punters. I bet that's the most stress they've ever been in in their entire lives. That was the most exercise they've ever done. They were like, "I'm used to kicking for 15 seconds, and that's all I have to do in a game." Yeah, now I got to exercise. Up, sissy. You gotta, Shit. Yeah. <laughs> we got a uh, we got a party, man. And then afterwards, ugh, Northgate is just Northgate is the party <sighs> district at, at College Station. And it is insanity. I people just are like, oh, it's like Sixth Street. No, no, it's nothing I was gonna like say it's like the country version of Sixth Street. If people yeah. all had guns, not just some people. Hundred percent. Everyone's act right. got guns and people they act, act right. better. Yeah. But they're still sloppy drunk. Oh, hammered, hammered. <laughs> I woke up making out with a girl one time. You and, and cut. Yep. You, at, you were were you chicken. asleep or did you just black back in? Oh, I just black back in. Jeez. For sure. Yeah, because you've been drinking at the tailgate all day. You're there and then <laughs> you go out and maybe it's probably. chili fest or whatever. Ugh. I got and, it. Uh, uh, Aggies won 74 right, to 72 baby. in seven overtimes. Seven <laughs> overtimes. So it's been a little bit more dramatic, but that's Dean But Stanfield. still, I remember it was like two hours longer than they were expecting the game to be. Oh, it just kept going and yeah. going and going. And then finally the Ags won and it was just, ugh. Yeah. Fucking was, mess. Was Were you at College for Station for that game? No, I wasn't. I was in. Uh, I was in East Texas at okay. my family's reunion. Yeah, I was, I was. I had tickets to it. So you were basically at College Station if you were in East Texas exactly. at your family reunion. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, we're not too far. It's God's country. It's God's country. <laughs> it's God's country. Yeah, it's I try God's to. Country. So I. I really appreciate talking to you because yeah. like you're my most country friend that does comedy. Hundred percent. And like I. I don't. So I I'm not. You. I'm not in it as much as you are, but I was yeah. raised. Very similarly, yeah, like, but you get all the like I can talk to you about stuff, yeah, and not, you know, like you know, we have more of a connection than most 
uh, other people because yeah, we well, grew up on a deer lease. You know what? You yeah, know, going I grew to deer up deer hunting. Yeah, yeah, like there's literally a viral video of me on YouTube at 10 years old shooting my first hog, oh, and it would great. have been the state record hog that year had I submitted it. Oh. It was like over 300 pounds, and the state record that year wasn't that great. So I probably could have had the state record as a 10 year old. Jeez, <laughs> and it's just this video of little Alice, and like you, all you see is the hog, and then it falls after I shoot it, and then the camera zooms back, and it's little 10 year old Alice, and being like, I. Go to hog, dad. <laughs> you ever listen to like little videos? So there's a there's a uh, and I don't know if it sounded like this, but like when we're young and that's the only people we're around. Like our accents are my not accent, crazy. You have an accent a but little it's not. bit, but it, it comes out more when I'm talking to someone who has a stronger one. And yeah. like I was just out hunting because your dove season opened this past weekend, yeah, right so I was out hunting dove and and other stuff, and so trying to shoot right some now. hogs. Yeah, so Absolutely hot, nothing. but I could, we we could. I haven't seen anything yet this season. Oh, it was they were flying for us. Oh, were they? Yeah, it was good. Oh, yeah. But um, it was just crazy because my my boyfriend came with us and he didn't grow up hunting. Like, oh, that's gonna be great. and it's great. Like yeah. he's learning. He's I mean he shot a couple doves. Like picked right up on it. If you know, if you're basically athletic, it's not that hard. No, especially with a shotgun, it's a spread pattern. Yeah, point in that direction and shoot. Right. Don't yeah. overthink it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, but it was funny because I said something to him and he was he just goes. You know, I love it when you come out here and you start talking country again. When you start talking country. Oh, yeah. I was like, what did I even say? And he goes, I don't know. You just you just sounded like this for a second. It's, it's, <laughs> dude, it's hard for me when I come back and do comedy. I don't know if you experienced this, but like going to hang out with my Louisiana people, I'll come back and I'll feel, I mean, I mean, I'll hear it in my voice. I'll be right. like, or I'll, the stuff I said, you know, like I don't ever say like, oh, uh, that's tighter than a squirrel's tail on a biscuit or whatever the fuck they say. Which they do say stupid stuff like that. Right. Um, but, uh, I just like yeah, my accent gets a little bit deeper, and I start talking a lot faster. That's the thing. Yeah, I have to I have to dial myself down. Right. Well, cause it's weird because people don't like people associate the drawl with being slow speaking. Yeah. Oh, but it's when not. you when you really can't understand them, it's because they're talking fast and they still got this and they're not hitting any other consonants or anything like that. They're just flowing everything just... together like that when they're going over there and talking yeah, like that. You exactly. know what I'm saying? And they're going down to the color store. You know, <laughs> you're going to get something right there. You're not listening to me because last time I told you to get some A's and you didn't get them A's, right? Because you didn't get act like you can't hear what I'm saying. What you're looking at me like you're stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like they do it like that. It's like you know what just popped into my head was the rap song, the whisper song, <laughs> when you were talking like that. <laughs> what if we made a country remix? Oh, that would be hilarious. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, but my sister in law has like a pretty. I mean, it's not super strong, but she grew up in Lavernia, which is outside okay, of yeah. San Antonio. She grew up, you know, near having, Bernie. Lo, it is near Bernie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, her, yeah. so she's got a little more of a drawl than like my brother and I do. And every time I'm hanging out with her, I I, I always slip into it, and I just yeah. sound more Texan. And I'm just like, okay, Jordan, us, yeah, See, whatever. But Texan, we are the most. I think out of the South, we're the most le legible. No, uh, understandable. Understandable. Yeah. 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 Uh, you can understand our accent better, like because like like Gabe Davis. Oh yeah. When he gets Georgia. back from his family, yeah. oh. It's on jaw. Just what I was saying. What like he has this long. That's drawn the long out, long. honey drawl. Yeah. yeah, that's the slower one. And it's like, ugh. Yeah. It's like, get to the point, dude. <laughs> Conversations are boring and you're slow. That's why they have to freaking Cajuns. dub. Like uh, they have to dub a lot of those Louisiana shows. You yeah. know, because like those are swamp people because they've got the speed and the cadence of Texas. They got drawl. shit to do. Yeah, they got but... alligators chasing them. They can't be yeah, got crocodiles in the water. Yeah. They got stuff that bite them, kill them. They, they don't, don't have time, time to... to enunciate their T's. Dude, for real. <laughs> and I love talking fast. Like when I get into like a riff, especially when I'm riffing yeah. or doing comedy, I'll yeah. start talking and I'll start doing like that when I'm saying, like, we're going on the store, what is? And I'm doing it you know, like, like doing that style, but just talking, like yelling and getting crazy. And people are always like, uh, people are laughing and stuff. But I talk so fast that people don't, they can't catch it. Right. And laughs but they're compound. also probably just laughing because they can't understand it. If they exactly. lose the train, and then it's, it's like, just okay, funny. Well, then it's not funny because, you know, yeah. but people are still laughing. So it's like, yeah. I had to get out of that. I think, I think one of my favorite things too is, especially with so many people <sighs> moving to Austin now, is they don't realize that we're still in Texas, yeah. you know? And like they'll meet someone like you who grew up fairly close to Austin. Yeah. And it's just like, Florence, oh, Texas, where yeah. if you're woke, they'll kick you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them, dude, they try to go to these Georgetown shows and they get cocky and I'm like, hey man, just like Austin, you can say anything you want to. But if you if, say some crazy shit, Mike Eaton almost got stabbed. In really? The Georgetown, I'm telling you right now, he, he left. He said, 
he and it actually gave me one of the best jokes that I've been working on now. Not that I I took it. You know, I'll, I'll explain it. Right. He goes up there to Georgetown and he says uh, he's from California. He's got the bleached hair. You know, he's got his little. Yeah, he's Mike. Mike is him. already being too woke for Georgetown by just looking the way he just does. Just looking the way he does, and so. <laughs> He went up there and he was like, uh, fuck the police. Blue <laughs> lives don't matter. And I, 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 I grabbed the sides of my chair. I was like, the fuck did he just? Oh, no. And I thought about it and I was like, oh, no. And there's like veterans in the front. They like got up and they, they were like, just looked at him. And they're like, nope. <laughs> Move on, buddy. Move on. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. And Mike just starts pouring sweat. And he's like, okay, we well, all didn't like that. Uh, I'm going to finish up with another joke. Uh, I, I let my girlfriend pet peg me sometimes and he was like and he just like said this last joke and he, he just did something and he was like all right guys i'm leaving goodbye and set it set it down and walked to the back and like dash like went, we, we straight to the back of the room and and uh you know got him out the door the other guys i met the other guys at the door and i was like hey guys and they were like you better tell that boy to leave holy shit and it was like mike eaton like these people are serious ask mike about it some talk, talk oh to him my god yeah he mike from the it. giggle boys podcast so i go up there to address this room and i'm like what the <laughs> hell is going like what do i say people are just like with getting their pitchforks ready and just like sharpening sticks for the fucking poking right they're gonna do to the ogre mike eaton when they find him <laughs> and uh and i was like I, I went up there i was like okay guys uh, all things said he shouldn't have said that but when did rednecks start getting behind cops <laughs> When oh, the fuck? When I've the seen the, you working it, on this. Yeah, bit. I did it that night, and it, I didn't. Do, I did a shorter version of it, bro. I was just like, I don't like. We used to hate them. NASCAR is built from us running away from cops. Like I, <laughs> I run from cops all the time. They chase us through cornfields. They try to, you know, get us for dipping snuff or smoking cigarettes in the, you know, at the FFA barn. Right. I've run into the cops a hundred times. Had one good situation with them. Right. <laughs> Most of the time, it's bad. And I was like, but all of a sudden, you know, Fox News says. Uh, you know, back the blue. If you're some, you know, Trump supporter, you're also back in the blue. Right. And we just get on Went this fucking it. bandwagon. But no, I no. Nah, Jeez, cops. that sounds so similar. Tony Casillas was telling me when he was uh, commentating your bull riding, which I want to yeah. talk to you about this series oh, of yeah, country yeah, yeah, yeah. shit you're getting comedians you can, to I'm do. I'm just about to release it too. That's a good plug. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you did a bull riding competition with ten comedians, nine, ten, ten comedians, ten and comedians. basically there was like Only they were one all. Got hurt. Yeah, only one got hurt, but when he got hurt, <laughs> Sam Castillo, I love him very much. Sam Castillo uh -huh. is like one of the people who encouraged me to start doing stand up. He's awesome. He's a great guy. Um, love but him. Love but when he got hurt, Tony was the commentator for that event. And, you know, there's like a stand full of people watching these dumbass comedians who've never, some of them maybe have never seen a bull. Yeah, 100%. And uh, <laughs> definitely never met real cowboys, mm -mm. you know, and Sam gets stepped on by this bull yeah. and the, the cowboy helping him wrangle the bull is just like, walk it off, son. I've been trampled 13 times by real bulls. This one's a training bull. Get over it, you know. Should we tell you what he actually said? Because yeah, I know yeah, what he yeah, actually yeah, yeah. said. Yeah. He, he, said, he said, get up, quit being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam's laying on the ground and I love Sam I love Sam but I love it's a funny him. situation he's laying on the ground and he's like oh, oh he definitely and the cowboy just, just a couple walks ribs. up yeah, I had to get out of the barrel because I was in the barrel hosting this thing oh, and so I had to get out of the barrel and run over there to make sure like Sam's gonna be alright like right. I don't want him to because you get hit like that, like they're, they're delicate. He's, you know. Well, also ribs are scary. Like and ribs are fine. I mean, ribs can like heal themselves, but the scary part is like, is it going to stick something else? You know. So if you're hurt you like that, if, if it's like that, like I've been stepped on so many times, yeah. but he doesn't know that, right? So I want to go over there and just tell him instead of quit being a bitch. You know, like, it's like I, hey, it's going to be okay. Be I right, know man. you're it's hurt. I'm sorry. I've, I've done this you're probably going to pee a little blood. <laughs> But honestly, don't even go to the hospital. It's not worth it. I've done it a hundred times. <laughs> I got stomped on so many times, and I never went to the hospital. And I, I'm, I'm here. Okay, I'm right. fine. Um, it just if you start pooping blood, I would go. <laughs> then but you if should you're just go. peeing blood. Your right. liver got stomped, and yeah. it's gonna be yeah. fine. It sounds crazy, but you're gonna be okay. Yeah. And that's what he was trying. The cowboy was trying to convey, but he just hasn't. He's not around. <laughs> he's sweet a cowboy. Boys. Yeah. yeah, they're just not around sweet boys. <laughs> <laughs> they're my sweet boys. I felt so bad. I was sitting in that barrel. It, so, I'll explain the deal. Uh. So I, I decided when I started comedy, I've always tried to find like, like what's my what's my niche in all this, you know? Yeah. Like how how do I present myself the best? And um, uh, comics started moving here, and uh, they would ask me all the time, like, "Hey, take me to do something Texan, right? Show me what Texas is like." And I was always like, "All right, yeah, heck yeah, man, let's go hunting, fishing." You know, I took guys um, out hog hunting, duck hunting, Gabe Davis, Spencer. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go through a list of comedians, but I would take comedians out all the time. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should start filming this. Yeah. And so I put together like a, a list of like six ideas. And I was like, I'd like to make it kind of like a competition show. Yeah. 
have him do some crazy stuff. And I was going to start with, bull riding was supposed to be the last night. Mm. I was supposed to do fishing and hunting and a barbecue competition. And yeah. then at the grand finale, it's the bull riding. And uh, it all just came together perfect where I started playing in the bull riding. And then I told a couple comics. They all got really excited about it. And I was like, okay, all right. Like, I thought I was going to have to talk people into this. Right. And they came to me and they're like, oh, yeah, totally. We're down for it. Half of them thought it was a mechanical bull. Yeah. <laughs> until they showed up for practice. Because I was like, hey, guys, you need to show up to practice. They're like eyes rolling and shit. Right. And I was like, trust me. You want to practice. If you don't show up to practice, I'm not letting you on these bulls. These are bulls. And yeah. they showed up and they were like, there's an Instagram video <laughs> of the first time they saw somebody get thrown off a real rank bull. Oh, God. <laughs> and it's just all of their faces, all their faces, and they're just like, and they like look at the camera and it's Dave J and Ben Smith and Ben Smith's like <sighs> <laughs> and like four minutes before that they've been talking shit they were like hey is there gonna be a vet here in case I hurt the bull and oh my god saying all kinds of douchey shit and I was like I was like alright guys just wait that's so funny and they were and they all pulled it off they did their practice like they were supposed to they listened to the cowboys um, I had some professional bullfighters there I made it as safe as possible right but I told all of them. I, I talked you out of it. I asked you to do it, and I, I talked yeah. you out of it. I, um, you you kind of talked me out of it, and then I also talked myself out of it. Because you had, like, two different practice dates. Mm -hmm. And I saw the videos from the first one. And, like, you had said training bull, so I knew it was going to be a real bull. Yeah. But in my head, it was, like, a young one or something. And so I was like, oh, it's a smaller bull. And then I was like, no, the only way this ends is I'm falling off of a full-size bull. That's the thing. That's <laughs> you the know? thing that they asked. All, every <laughs> single one of them was like, okay, so... How do I dismount? I was like, no, no, no. You get thrown off. The only way you get off is you get thrown off. 100%. Every the single time you've minimum, ever rode. Minimum of what's happening is you are falling off of a six, seven foot tall thing okay, onto the ground. Six or seven, like three or four. four it's or like, okay, well, his back is like five. Your head's up a little bit. Six, I don't seven, know. I guess that is true. Yeah. yeah but you're, you're from pretty high up there. But you're landing in a soft sand you're pit. You're landing in pit. Yeah. If, you're, if, you, if you'll dive for a volleyball, you'll jump off a bowl. Now, <laughs> when you do that, there's not a 1,200 pound... It's a 2,000 pound animal trying to stomp your brains out. Right. But yeah. Most of these animals, it's dangerous. That's yeah. what I explained to every one of them. I was like, hey guys, this is an opportunity to do something that's crazy uh, and uh, it's going to be wild. Um, it's going to be safe. I'm telling you, this. we put 12 year olds on these bulls. Yeah. So they're just old. Well, because you guys are really senile. good at wrangling them outside of who's on it. Like, yes. that's the thing is. As long as you don't fall like Sam did. Exactly. Directly underneath them as yeah. they're running. And that was the point of the practice was to teach them how to fall properly so that. Because the bull, like, when I say you guys are good at wrangling them, like, y'all are really good at getting the bull's attention to run after the clowns or after yes. the, the barrels. So yeah. that way he's not trying to, like, get the person that just fell off of him. Because they don't and, really want you. They want, if you, that was the number one rule to, you know, bullfighting or bull riding. As soon as they come at you, just curl up in a ball. Yeah. They'll feel bad for you. They might put their horns on you. They might touch you. They might step over you or on you. Right. But, but they're, they're not, not going to charge. They're not going to charge and keep going after you. It's yeah. real, real rare. It happens, but it's real rare. Yeah. And so uh, when there's clowns that are up and running around and smacking them and, right. you know, yeah, doing their thing, that's their, that's their job. Yeah. Yeah, it was just crazy. And it was you talking about Mike was just reminding me of Tony telling me that he was there commentating the bull riding and Sam gets stepped on and there's this whole like stand of people watching and he was like you could just tell that was the moment that everyone realized this was real because Sam was like the third comedian and Tony had to think of what to say after like the, the crowd just gets silent and so he said he literally just grabbed the mic and went that's what he gets for voting for Joe Biden <laughs> and the I can't wait for the video to come out just and if you don't hear it right before it, it's Sam like leans out and he goes, help. Oh. And then and Tony can't hear that. It's on the loudspeaker. You can't hear that. But Tony goes, uh, Tony goes, well, that's what he gets for voting for Biden. <laughs> and it just like Destroys. half the crowd lost it. Half the crowd lost it. And the other half was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and so in my mind, you can see my face change. And they got a reaction of it. And it's my face where I'm like, this is all fun. We're having good, funny games. And then I realize I'm like, these people are my friends. Yeah. <laughs> I asked my friends to get on this, but like, this is all your fault. All of them are going to die. Obviously, <laughs> Dean, what the fuck are you doing with your life? They're all sweet boys. Like and then you I said. was like, even lawsuits alone, I got to move to Alaska. <laughs> I got to move to Alaska, get the fuck out of here. Because I got a, a billion dollar lawsuit coming my way. 100%. I will say that uh, I was there in the Charlie, pit filming. Charlie was filming, yeah. He was yeah. in the pit going after it. Dude. And uh, when Sam fell off the bull and uh, he got stomped on, for a second, you could hear a pin drop. 
<laughs> and there oh, was, I've never seen more silence. That was yeah. the, probably the most silence I've ever seen in a. It was like there was over a hundred people there, right? Over a hundred, over one hundred and fifty. Yeah, Jeez. you could hear a pin around one hundred and eighty, one hundred and eighty people in an outdoor <laughs> event with cattle out. Like the horses stopped talking. Two <laughs> pastures over, they were like that little white boy is dead. No, <laughs> we all thought, and he wouldn't get up. And I was like, why is he not getting up? Because I've seen people stomped a whole bunch, and yeah. your first reaction is. Usually fight or flight and right. get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Especially if you've already been stomped and the bull is away. Once you see the bull is somewhere else, you're like, get the fuck out. I, I, cause you, that's what he, and that's what the cowboy had meant to him. He wasn't, I mean, he probably, they don't give a fuck about your feelings over right. there. But he was thinking to himself, he's like, hey, if you don't get up, you're going to get stomped again. Again, yeah. Like, so get and up you're and you're going to get me hurt trying to keep, because he's going to, even though they say that, they'll talk shit to you. Right. If that bull comes back around, he'll jump on his head. Yeah. And punch him. So that he, you know, avoids, they'll throw themselves in your path to make sure you don't get hurt. Right. But he's like, you know, get up, get up, get yeah. out of here. You can deal with the hurt in I'm 10 like, seconds. I'm like, this is probably the closest to death he's ever been. Yeah. In his mind. You know, if you're laying there and you're like, oh, this beast just stomped me. Well, yeah. I mean, they're fucking huge. You don't huge. know if your back is broken. Yeah. You don't know in those moments. Yeah. And it hurt. And it's such a like, I'm sure the fall plus the stomp doesn't help because the fall alone has the chance of like knocking the wind out of you if you land wrong. Oh, 100%. So it's like you probably like lose your breath and then you get hit. So it's like, fuck, yeah. Did I just break my back? You know? I, I was, there was probably, I had four or five bad wrecks when I was riding. And I had one specifically, I'll remember, like, I still have nightmares about it. Mm. Like, 100%. All yeah. The people talk about it. And it's not, you're not a little bitch uh, for it. Like, I know a lot of cowboys talk about this. Like, it's legit. If this is what PTSD is, it's on a very low. Right. I mean, so I'm not trying to be brave. Yeah. But I was on top of him. He slung me forward, and I was wearing a vest, which is unfortunate. I was, we were all, three of us, three of us cowboys were sharing a vest. So we didn't have enough money for our so own. So was it too big or? So it was it was a little too small. Mm. And when I had it, it was zipped and then it was Velcroed over the zip. And so I couldn't get it to zip. So all I did was Velcro it. Oh. And it held for a while. It held yeah. for a while. And um, and that time it didn't. He swung me over the front of him and I landed. And the first I landed in front of him and his horns hit me the first time and it opened up my jacket. And the second time it hit me, it, the, I felt the, the horn, like, drag across my ribs. Fuck. So it threw me another, like, probably 15, 20 feet against a, uh, against a, uh, a railing. I'll show you this video yeah. afterwards. And, um, and you can see me, like, smack him. I, like, I get up, and he's running at me, and I smack him on the head, and a clown runs past, and that follows him. I jump over the fence, and it's, it's bloody. My Ooh, shirt's bloody. Yeah. I, I, remember, I remember sitting there, like, holding it. Yeah. Thinking the, the rib... The horn went through my ribs and it like tore my guts out. Right. And I couldn't look at it. Yeah. And I had to, I just, I just, I told one of the guys out there, I just like looked at him and I was like, hey, how bad is it? Right. And he's like, I can't tell. And I was like, fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Like, I'm dying. This is the moment where I don't right. realize it. Everybody else realizes it. And I'm just sitting here. And I was, I was like this. And he, and one of the cowboys goes, dude, you're fine. And he like opens up my shirt. And it's just a scratch. Oh my gosh. And I was like, but in my head, I was like, oh, this is it. I died. Right. And it was just a really bad bruise that like tore some of the skin. Ooh. But my ribs protected me. I mean, right. It did, it did its job. Yeah. Um, and really, in, unless the the bull puts his horns on you and you're already on the ground and there's nowhere for you to go. Right. Like most of the time, your ribs are going to do their job. Yeah. They're going to break and they for sure broke. Yeah. And I broke four ribs on that one. It was just, this entire side was just Jeez. fucked up. You can't pee. You can't poop. You can't. Well, that's like that's Only getting thing you back do is to get like a blowjob. So. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I told my girlfriend. He's like, that's why I, I get. Like, that's why I do it. Doctor's orders, babe. It says the only thing we can do is the only thing legal. Got to make sure the blood flow is working. Yeah, for sure. Just gotta keep. Do you love me? If you love me, then you'll. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. That's similar to nice you saying like, said. why is it hard to watch this? It's hard to look at like your injury. My uncle got. Uh, zapped by lightning out at one of our dear leases one time it was oh, like did he really dude him and my dad and it was like him and my dad and my mom's cousin or something and my whole family is from upstate new york so mm -hmm. like once my parents moved down here and all that stuff like which they're really country up there yeah they're super country that's the thing people don't realize about upstate new york like once you get out of the city it is hick town like yeah, it's hick town up so there, yeah. yeah so my dad and his brother grew up hunting my mom grew up fishing and all that stuff and uh, so her cousin came out one time and uh, he was just excited because they don't have boar hogs in New yeah. York, right? So he's like, I want to go Texas boar hog hunting, right? Texas so, boar hog hunting. That's oh, how yeah. they talk about, you know, and so. Which, I mean, that's what we call, we just call it running dogs here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, because people don't realize a lot of times we'll use the dogs to track the hogs and corner yeah. them and stuff. Um, but yeah, he was just so excited to like, go out and see some Texas boar hogs yeah. and they didn't know it was going to storm. And so they were out there and this storm just blows in out of nowhere and it's bad. So yeah. they were like 
packing find up. Find a tree. No, find a tree and let it out. They were packing let up in the out. car and like trying to get out of there and stuff. <coughs> and uh, that we had like two That's different like gates car. that you had to like drive through to get out of the property. Yeah. And uh, it's thundering and lightning and raining at this point. My dad is sending his brother out to like open the gates. Yeah. And one of the gates that he had to open, lightning hit. Right when he put his hand on oh, to open it, what are the odds? and so the lightning traveled the fence and ran right across his hands. And my dad said he literally saw my uncle's feet in like the window. Like he jumped, like it it sprang him so high that his feet were in the top of the window of like the pickup truck that they were driving. Jeez. So he was blown in the air, and then he like the gate was open, so they drove through, and he like dove back into the car, and he's holding his hand like this, and he wouldn't look at it because he thought it had blown his hand off. And so my dad, same thing as the cowboy. My dad basically was like, don't be a bitch. Look at it. You know, like you got, you you know, and of course he luckily had his fingers and everything still. And then my dad made him get out and open the next one. Oh, (laughs) like like a man. Like a man. Don't Don't be be a a bitch. Don't be a bitch. (laughs) Listen, and that's, that's we say that as a derogatory thing. And if you think about it, the way that they, the way that, what they're trying to convey is like, like if you, you have the opportunity to get hit by lightning and then open the next gate. Yeah. That's a story you can have. Right. Choose the story or don't choose the story. Like you right. Can, your life is, you know, uh, as cool or not cool as you want it to be. And know? also like, like minutes, get up. You're but it's also fine. like get done what you need to get done. You know, you got to finish this thing. Yeah. And that could be literally as simple as you got to. I don't want to have to get out of the car. What if I get wet and I get struck by lightning? Right. Then that's the well, yeah, I'm that's use, the other but one. But it's also like, far-fetched. but yeah, like yeah. with Sam too, it's, you know, the same thing is like, don't be a bitch. It's like, you got to get done what you need, need, need to get done. Part of riding the bull is if it stomps on you, you still got to get your ass up and get out of the arena so that you can get the medical attention that you need. 100%, you know, 100%. so it's just, it's a much shorter way of saying, I'm saying yeah, we don't have time to bullshit. We got a bull running around. Right. We'll be a pussy and get up. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was crazy. Yeah. That was insane. It was such a good time. Okay, so, so what else do you have? Like, what are the other things you're planning for that series? So uh, we will be releasing that in a couple weeks. We're going to have yeah. The Creek in the Cave. It's going to host a night. Uh, we're going to need an hour. We're going to sh- we're gonna show Screen the 30-minute thing and then do a uh, stand-up after that. So it'll be like yeah. a two-hour show, 30 minutes to watch it, and then, you know, each of the comedians will come up there. And then Chris Tan will be awarded his buckle. Because he stayed on the longest, he stayed on right? The longest, six yeah. seconds. Six yeah. seconds. Uh, and so um, well, we got the bull riding. We've got the uh, uh, um, the fishing tournament. Mm. It's going to be six bass boats, two comedians per bass boat. Uh, and um, they're going to have uh, eight hours, six to eight hours um, to fish. And then we're going to hold the weigh in because you know, have to keep them live. Yep. We're going to host the weigh in. Uh, at the park, and they got a little pavilion, and we'll do the comedy show there. Nice. So the you know the winners will be stacked like that, and we'll just get like conversations. It's gonna be a, I think that one's gonna be a much longer podcast. Yeah, not a podcast, just a TV show. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna do a uh, uh, cooking one. Barbecue. Barbecue. Right? We've got some of uh, we've got uh, Franklin's is on board, uh, and so is uh, um, who is another one? Yoni is helping out with that. Yeah. Uh, he's going to get us a couple more. Cade, I think Cade so yeah, said CM he would Smoke be House. at CM Smokehouse. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and that's not through us. That's, uh, what's his name? Uh, real tall, um, Emilio Babbitt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knows the people that, that uh, one of the smoke masters at Franklin's oh, and offered yeah. to help him. So that gave us the idea to, um, uh, to have the whole competition done by, we're going to have a professional smoke master there. And then you're going to have two comedians. And the smoke master can't touch anything. So he just has From to the tell fire them box to, do. to the yeah to the meat, the way it's prepped, oh. the way they take it off, what they do with it, how they cut it, everything has to be done by the comedians. The oh. whole thing will be filmed. That's just going to be a test in how you can drive a smoke master crazy. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. Like <laughs> you're going to ruin Franklin's barbecue, dude. Oh, hundred. Yeah, no, <laughs> we're going to find out, and that, that's why it's like, man, if if they if they all if we get a few more of the uh, local um, local uh, smokehouse places or local barbecue joints to get involved yeah could be big yeah Yeah, that'd be fun we're having uh, i think hbo is looking at this one we have a couple of different networks uh that i've I've pitched it to at least sending up just gonna send a tape to them hopefully it gets picked up it might be something cool yeah on like amazon or netflix or something i don't know it's it's but judging by this first one if it comes out good it's a great idea um it's super fun and it's a good way to like See Austin, Texas comedy. Yeah, you know? and it's—I mean—it's called Welcome to I Texas. I mean, it's your—it's ver- your version of fucking like comedians in cars getting coffee. You're oh, yeah, just 100%, comedians yeah. doing country shit, you know. And, like, 
and be and, and join about and they get to learn a different aspect of what Texas is. They're they're in this place. They yeah. should know they're in a little bubble that's Austin. But outside of that, there's 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 a lot more. I said I joked earlier about saying you know Florence, Texas. If you're woke, they'll kick you to sleep. <laughs> yeah. But uh, rednecks and people outside the Austin city limits are a lot more um, uh, woke than you would think. Yeah. You know, they're, they're a lot more accepting. Like, they don't hate gay people. The way, I've never heard anybody say that shit. Yeah, the way that I've kind of, because I've been thinking about that a lot lately, and the way that I've kind of started explaining it to people is, I just think it's a language barrier. Yeah. Because... It, it, I've ne- I'm the same as you. I've never met someone in the country who's actually homophobic. No. They just don't care that you have specific words you want to use for it. Yes. Like if they yeah, if they say like a word that you perceive as derogatory to someone, they're not saying it to be derogatory. Like saying the word transvestite, for example. Like yeah. they're just saying that because that's the word they have to describe someone who would identify as transgender. If you tell them, hey, the word is transgender, they'd be like, oh, sorry, I didn't know that. And that's it. Instead of yelling at them. You know? That's a big deal. Like, yeah. This. yeah and it's like, just oh, like the. Just it's, assume my pronouns. Yeah. It's just that they like, they I aren't, mean, they aren't involved is. in that. And so they're not aware that the language has changed and they yeah. and they're not using it in a way to like insult people it's just the words that they have and they're like why do i need to keep changing my words we already have words for these things i'm not saying it in a derogatory manner i'm just yeah. it's a descriptor for this person they identify as this way and now oh sorry now the word is offensive didn't know and that's it you know and there's some that uh, are a little hardy you know right a little more more harder stances right uh, on some other political issues but you're not going to like I mean, we talk about it all the time. I'm sure you have elderly grandparents that are a little more racist Dude, than we would like to. my grandma in upstate uh, New York, when I visited her, she literally ran into the living room. We were like, me and my mom and my boyfriend were like doing a puzzle or some shit. We're just chilling at night. It's raining outside. We don't have yeah. anything to do. And my grandma runs into the living room and she's like, we got to see this special report. Biden's ruining the, ruining the world. Afghanistan's going to shit. And she just Granny. like turns on Fox News immediately. Uh. And, I, and then she starts telling me about how Bill Gates is already dead. <laughs> and I was like, I haven't even heard that one. What's going on? Lady, you got four years left to live. What are you doing <laughs> worrying about this bullshit? No, go, go, yeah. go build the puzzle. Go. Go so to yes, Paris. To answer travel. your question, yes, I have some family members. Oh, jeez, dude. I don't know if you've written any comedy about it, but I just started like like peeling into um, some of like just the funny stories that they've told, or like just a comparison of it, and yeah. and having to be okay with it because it's weird. My grandma is really racist. Yeah, and uh, really racist. I have a couple cousins, a couple uncles that are like legit, you know, mm-hmm. and and I'm just like they just say stuff, and it's like. I, I'm not gonna start a fight, dude. Yeah, you know, like, that's you... the other thing. I tried <laughs> trying doing to goad me into it. I'm like, dude, this is weird. I tried I'm doing a joke to... that like didn't work in Austin because yeah. the joke was literally what happened when I went to our last family reunion in upstate New York. The joke was literally just I look like someone who would show up to a family reunion in New York and have a Confederate flag out front yeah. because that's what happened, and that was just the <laughs> whole joke, pretty much. And it's like, what's the logic here? We're in New York, like yeah. pick a different flag, guys. You know, but Jesus. um, but yeah, you go there and like everyone's super nice, and they're like, I obviously don't think they should be flying that flag because it no. sends the wrong message. But to yeah. them, it's like a country pride thing. It's not even yes. implying racism. To them, it's like, oh, we're prideful <sighs> from being from the country. And it's like, y'all just don't understand that and you're they wrong. And get a bad rap. <laughs> yeah, they just you get know? a bad rap about it because they'll, the, the way the people cut tapes, and they say this is that, this and that, this and that. But I know there was one rally I saw. That it just looked, they made it look, met rednecks look so bad. Right. They were doing like Confederate flag. And they're like, we're not racist. We love Mexicans. Hell, <laughs> hell, I, 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 I got thirty Mexicans that are working for me right now. None of them have IDs. They ain't got no <laughs> damn legal papers. But I love them. They're part of my family. I bring them into my house. You know, right? And it's like, all right, dude. Well, fucking, you almost had it, dude. You almost had it. You almost had it. Had it. You're and they're like, so if close. we didn't like Mexicans, I love tortillas. I eat tortillas all the fucking time. I tip the Mexican lady down there at the damn corner store every oh morning. Oh my gosh, dude. Say what's up, Lupita. <laughs> Perfect example is I had to teach my cousins from Vermont what tortillas were. Uh, I remember visiting up there one time in like middle school and my mom had made like eggs or whatever for breakfast. And I was like, hey, do we have any tortillas so I can make a taco out of this? And they were like, what's tortilla? 
Jesus. And I was like, do you guys... Uncultured swine. Taco Bell even? Like, what's going on? <laughs> you <laughs> you know? don't even do even Taco Bell? Yeah, I was like, it's tortilla, not tortilla. I think I had to say uh, tortilla, and they are like, oh, I know what that is. Like tortilla soup, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, man. Yeah, it's wild. Making homemade tortillas. I almost married a girl because she could make some good homemade tortillas. <laughs> I didn't want that. And it sounds bad, but I did send... We're friends still. And I did send another girl her way. To so learn. She learn how to make those tortillas because I missed them so bad. Oh, that's they're so good. so funny. It was so good. So now we know Dean Stanfield's dating uh, credentials hey, are blowjobs and tortillas. Yeah, ladies, if you single, <laughs> if you don't mind me not having a lot of money, okay? <laughs> uh, I'll have some money someday, but... He'll be able to shoot things to cook for you. I, I imagine there's a lot of pretty women that listen to your podcast. Women, we'll I'm see. single, ladies. Uh, I can, you know, hunt. I can fish. Uh... I, I get well. I'm not going to get into that. Sorry, my mom sometimes listens to these. But if you like blowjobs and tortillas, uh, <laughs> can make both of those. I'll make the tortillas. Just bring the blowjob. Yeah, there just you go. Just bring the blow. <laughs> That's an equal partnership. Yeah. <laughs> just be sweet. Don't try to fight my mom. <laughs> yeah, we don't drink boxed wine. Don't drink boxed wine. Yeah. What's your drink of choice? Uh, recently, gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. Gin and taco. Dude, Usually I was, it's ranch water, but I was a little mad at you gin. for introducing me to that coffee martini at uh, Creek in the Cave. Mad because I showed you the tastiest it was thing. That's so good, so delicious. Oh, and you're not a drinker. Either. I'm not a drinker, uh, so and yeah. I tasted it, and I was like, I would get lit as fuck on two of these because I, feel... I would drink it and not taste the alcohol, and then I'd be like, Wow, it's been two years since I've had alcohol, and I'm drunk now. And I'm drunk now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel so bad when people. Uh, I, it's it's. I just forget who's sober and who's not. And there's so many comics. And if they're sober, though, like, they're, I mean, to, to me, it's like I never hit a rock bottom or anything. It's yeah. just like I just... But for some, it's a problem. Being drunk is fun, but it's like I just don't like dealing with the hangover effects. So to me, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just not going to deal with it, you know? Yeah. That's but, not the case with Craig Fergola. And if I kick Craig Fergola off the wagon, I think that I might be the last one. <laughs> there are uh, There are some comedians that have prior addictions worse than alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so much worse, dude. This is really messed up, and Craig will be okay with me saying this. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, comics were pretty messed up. Yeah. You know, like, we have to tone this down. Like, we're talking right now, <laughs> but if we were off camera, we'd be saying, you know, crazy. Or, you know, like, just it's just how it goes. <laughs> right. And so, um, uh, and we all let each other get away with it. It's fine. And nothing too crazy. But um, uh, I remember one of the comedians walked up, and he was like, hey, uh, we're getting a Deadpool together. Who do you, Who's your top guy? Oh no! And I was like, can you, I was like, can you explain a Deadpool? Oh, okay, so a Deadpool yeah. is it's who you think out of a group of people is going to either to commit die suicide, next. yeah, or to, to, just to die next. Who's the first one to die? And so what it does is you get money together, and everybody gets a person. <laughs> and when one of those people dies, whoever Guess whoever it was person. gets the full entire pot. Yeah, <laughs> that was the joke that they made. And I was like, dude, I got real serious. I was like, hey man, I'm not going to sit here and try to guess. Which one of my friends, which one of my close personal friends is going to kill themselves first? <laughs> that being said, $20 on Craig, Craig Fidola. Fidola. I'm not wasting money. I'm not losing money on the deal. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude, one of, my, one of my friends has one of those going on their uh, Facebook for celebrities. Fuck. So, like, anyone she's friends with can vote on it, on her yeah. thing. Because, like, as soon as an old celebrity dies, she's like, all right, you know. Uh, when, heart, when Anthony every Bourdain morning, died, walk, oh, yeah. when Anthony Bourdain died, that was a big one because she was just like, "Well, this no one voted on him because we weren't expecting it, but that was our next celebrity death." Everyone, drop your votes in the comments, and I was just like, "Yo, that's a little, that's a little death, that's a little tone death." <laughs> I know. They I definitely like, committed geez. suicide. <laughs> yeah, because he was sad. <laughs> I know, but it's always funny to see because like half but of it's the, also funny. The comments oh, are hilarious because like it. it's just like bad, I forget yeah. how many old celebrities there still are too. Some of them like Dick Van Dyke still alive. What the Betty fuck? White? Yeah. Betty White's She's still always taking, voted on there. Yeah. If, if she right now put up like a a deal and said like, a, you know, if you want to, uh, I need a, a, a male intern, a hot male intern <laughs> to just take me around and do shit. I would do whatever that woman wanted. <laughs> Dude, every time someone her votes for her up, on that her. Facebook Deadpool, pe like people get mad at the person who votes for Betty White because they're like, don't kill Betty. <laughs> Dude, if you kill Betty, you I swear kill to God. Betty. <laughs> there's not much that I would get really angry for in this world. Yeah. That's one of them. Betty White's one of them. Dude, yeah. you beat me on your IV. Hell yeah, I did. Punk rock. Yeah. Killing it. Yeah. Um, we're getting tailored. Is this it? Oh, yeah. We're going to. Are they taking it out? Yeah, she's okay. going to unplug you it, there. What if it was the last bit of adrenochrome I needed? Oh, gosh. I'm just kidding. 
She'll squeeze it out for you. I think we could probably wrap up the podcast too. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there oh, anything? This has been so much fun. Yeah. Thank you for coming in Heck and yeah. shooting this. This is kind of a last minute setup for today, sure, but I, sure. I wanted to have you on the show anyway. So I really appreciate it. it. I really appreciate you coming in, giving me the vitamins and nutrients from. Yeah, I got to make sure my friends are. Uh, Miss T- Miss Taylor. Taylor. Miss Taylor. Yeah. Has given us. I had all kinds of stuff like AD. Uh, NAD. NAD. Yeah. NAD. And got lysine, which is good for antiviral. And then mm-hmm. we put a liver detox blend in there for you. I already feel amazing. I'm telling you. Right Hell now, yeah. I can feel it in my finger. Do you feel chills? Are you supposed to feel chills? I get, yeah, sometimes so that's the chills. NAD because it's yeah. like, it's, it's like cell energy basically. Okay. Um, so it, I, that's when I said when I sped mine up and I was like, oh shit, I feel it. I slowed it down because it's just yeah. like a, it's a different kind type of buzz. You it, know? No, I, for a minute there, I yeah. probably sure it was a couple, I'm, working, I'm, I'm probably going to look back and be extremely annoyed of myself, but <laughs> I was sitting there, I was just like, rah, 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 rah. I get crazy and talk. No, it was good. But uh, do you, do you have anything you want to plug other, like where can people find the series that we were just talking about? So that's going to be released on my YouTube channel and my Patreon. Uh, but for right now, Dina Stanfield. On Instagram. On Instagram is the best place to go. That's where I post my shows. Uh, I don't know when this drops, but I got uh, six shows this weekend. Uh, well, you'll be published on Tuesday. So what's after this okay, weekend? So Sunset Strip. Uh, after that, just follow my Instagram. Dina I can't, Stanfield. I can't remember. I think I'm in Houston. Uh, but if you have any Houston listeners, come out and find me. Uh, Hell see yeah. the show. Um, and then always Barrels and Amps. Please come out. Barrels and Amps. If you ever want to see a good comedy show... I'll preach about the creek and the cave. It's a great place. But Barrels and Amps has the best show in Texas on a Thursday that you can find anywhere. And Dude. I'm humbly saying that. It's my place, but it truly is. If you want to see good comedy, that's the place to go. And uh, it's in Georgetown for my friends in in uh, the North Austin area. Yeah, we're bringing Georgetown killers show. from Austin, people that you're going to have to pay $25 a ticket to see. And you get to see, and you never know who's going to drop in. Yeah. I heard Rocky Dale Davis. Hold on, which side of this? Rocky Dale Davis <laughs> is supposed to come uh, here pretty quick. Dude, that um, show is so fun. I've gotten to do it a couple times. You have. I looking forward to having room. you back. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to having you back. Yeah. But, hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's been awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Just fucking fist bumps over here. Fuck yeah. I don't know how you end it, but. No, yeah. Thank you guys. This has been Detox oh, with talk Allison. About this thing. Oh, this, yeah. This is delicious. Yeah, this is the multivitamin so drink. Yeah. Uh, it's Boost by MSW Nutrition. The link mm-hmm. will be in the description of the podcast. Use the code DETOX, D-E-T-A-L-K-S, to get 15% off. And, uh, yeah, and shout out to, like, and yeah, my redneck friends, Zap Hopkins. I know you Liberty need some. Liberty Talks. Liberty Talks. Listen, Zach, Zach, Zach Hopkins and Ross <laughs> Kelly, buy this. You need it. it we, it's been a problem for a while, okay? We've been talking about it, and uh, with the rest of the group's been talking about it, and <laughs> you guys need it's, it's been dangerous. Zach, I know you got the problem downstairs and on the backside, and I know this personally, this is going to help it, okay? So please go talk to your doctor, call your wife, but more importantly, drink this. <laughs> <laughs> but really, just contact any of us. We're really worried about you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>